network. When our systems are hacked, they are done for various reasons, such as greed, adventure, revenge, even publicity, and access to forbidden information. Government websites are hot targets for hackers. Why? Because they are very, very much publicized. So they are hot targets for hackers because of the press coverage. Now, denial of service. When you hear denial of service, the word that comes to your mind is not allowing a service. And that's exactly what it is. Denial of service simply means preventing a service by sending malicious datagram that will even affect the network and stop connection. Now, an example of this is when some, a hacker sends a spam mail to a victim's email box and prevents the person from having access to a service. Let's go ahead. Identity theft. How many of us will say he or she doesn't use the internet? We all use the internet. I have not bought something online. Just to. That's to tell us that a lot of people do transactions online. Cash transactions, bank transactions. And this has opened so much doors to cyber criminals. They've taken use of this opportunity by taking individuals' bank account details, credit card details, social security details, taking sensitive information to enable them what? Siphon our funds. And it's increasing day by day. It causes a lot of financial loss to individuals. Computer vandalization. What does vandalization mean? When you hear the word vandalization, what does it mean? To destroy. So when you hear the word computer vandalization, it's just saying computer destruction. So computer vandalization is destroying or damaging data by sending malicious software termed as malware. And there are actually people that write this malware. They are called malware writers. There are various types of malware. We have virus, we have worms, we have Trojan horse. Cyber terrorism. Targeted towards military installation, power plants, air traffic control, banks, telecommunication network. Cyber terrorism attracts a very big option for modern terrorists. Why? Number one, it's cheaper and anonymous. Why should I stress myself making myself known when I'm attacking, when I can just go there quietly, nobody know who, knows who I am, and I do what I want to do? is cheaper and more anonymous than traditional terrorist method. Secondly, variety and number of targets are enormous because of the large internet users. Thirdly, crime can be conducted remotely from any location. And fourthly, has a potential to affect directly a large number of people. Let's go ahead. Software piracy. Software piracy is illegal copying of programs, genuine programs. Now, 
Let's use ourselves for instance. We have office. We'll say we don't want to buy the office that is sold for so 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 amount. We'll just throw down to one place and say, Oh, God, give me office. They'll bring out one office, 100 naira. Even movies, you don't want to buy the one that is genuine. You go to one place and buy the one that they sell for 100 naira. It's piracy. We cannot say, say software piracy is counterfeiting and distribution of products intended to pass for the original. When something is not original, it is what? It is fake. Okay, we're going to look at the statistics, third quarter statistics of Kapaski on malicious software installation. If we're observant, we'll find that at, that at 2018, the malicious software was out about a million plus. Gradually, it started reducing. True or false? Who can tell me why? There are a lot of internet users, yes. We say because of the large number of internet users, there certainly will be cyber attacks. But we are looking at these statistics and it's telling us that at a period of time, it started reducing. Why? Awareness, yes. Those that wrote the malicious programs, we should also know that when you bring something, a solution must come. So let's work on assumption now. Most probably solutions started coming in and it started reducing. But somewhere along the line, if we look at the second quarter 2019 to the third quarter 2019, it increased. Why? That is it. They've upgraded. So there's no way you can actually say they will just sit down where they are. No, when you are working your own, they are doing their own assignments. That's to tell you that at any time, T, they are ready, ever ready to attack. Okay, let's go further. Sorry. Cyber crime in Nigeria. We now know what cyber crime is, but let's narrow it down to our country, Nigeria. Cyber crime is performed in our country, Nigeria, by all age groups, true or false, but it's common among the youths. Why? There are various reasons why they really partake in cyber crime. Some of them just to be known as the best hacker, but some for profit making venture. You know, we youths were funny. We need to be popular, we need to be known. So it's either by doing it for money or for popularity. But still, it is common because the modern world have made the tool affordable to many. All right, let's go forward. Let's look at the statistics of internet users in Nigeria from 2017 and prediction to 2023. This statistic is immediate. From 2017, we were just few few internet users, but we can see that as the year goes by, the internet users increase. Same way the internet users increase, the attack increases. So cyber crime, as the year goes by, becomes stronger. 
and those that partake in cyber crime are increasing soon. Okay? There are various factors that affect cyber crime in Nigeria. One factor is high rates of unemployment. When you don't have a job, that is it. Another reason is quest for wealth. Some of us, even if we have a job, we still need more money. So we feel that's the easiest way to make money. Another reason is lack of strong cybercrime law in our country, Nigeria. Another reason is incompetent security on personal devices. How many of us can boldly say our phone is secure? Boldly say, boldly say your phone is secure. Another reason is wrong model amongst long grow model. Evil communication. When you always mingle with the wrong set of people, it takes divine grace for you not to be like them. Okay, let's go further. An estimated annual financial report on our financial loss in Nigeria due to cybercrime. In 2017, the financial loss was 250 billion. Was it? Hmm? We would have gone a long way. 250 billion. Unfortunately, it's expected that when you lose 250 billion, you try your best not to lose that amount of money again. But unfortunately, in 2018, sorry, in 2018, the loss increased to 228 billion. 88 billion. It's so unfortunate. I couldn't get the report for 2019. But you and I know what the report will give to us. You don't need to be told on the report for 2019. So let's go further. Some facts about cybercrime in Nigeria. In Nigeria, based on a report from Kapaski, Nigeria was one of the top 10 countries attacked by mobile malwares. We are saying, wow. To be one of the top 10 countries attacked by malwares, it means there's something wrong somewhere. No security. Okay, let's go further. Based on a report too, about 7,000 attacks were carried out under fake dating sites. And majority were African countries. What do they do? They say they are dating sites. Meanwhile, they've packaged malware. When you go to the sites, you will be given a form, fill in your detail. They are getting everything. If they even ask you what's your father's name, what's your father's account number, dating site, you will put it. Get the card number, self, you will put it. <laughs> Any detail they request of you, you will give it to them. Meanwhile, what are they doing? They are doing what? Your information and they will make use of it. You can imagine in 2019, the region was saw the region saw a circulation of 1,486 threats 
under 20 popular dating application in Africa. Just 20 out of many. So I'm very sure if they should keep on doing the check, it will be more than that. Let's go further. Cybercrime destroys the reputation of a nation. How? Making business environment difficult for startup. No, even foreign companies we want to invest in a country known for crime. True or false? True or false? True. Let's put foreign company aside. As individuals, if we want to do business, you know this person is fraudulent, would you go ahead? No. It destroys the reputation. Totally. Effects of cybercrime. Cybercrime reduces the competitive edge of an organization. How? Financial damages, physical damages of both public and private organizations. It causes a lot of annual losses in billions. Thirdly, when these hackers steal confidential information of the companies and they sell it out to their competitors, what happens? They have an edge over the company. So it reduces competitive edge of the organization, time wastage, and slow financial growth. When a company has been attacked, they spend a lot of tr time trying to solve or rectify the harm that has been caused. Wasting time, that time, if they use it for something else, it will produce a better result for the company. And besides, when they've been attacked like that, Customers that have entrusted their details to them will lose trust in them. Thirdly, slow production time and add to overhead cost. How? Because you are aware of cyber crime. In order to be secured, you spend a lot of time generating password. Generating password, wasting your time, wasting your production time. That aside, by the time you've been attacked, you will spend a lot of money getting security software to solve your problem. Waste of money. Defamation of image. Good people, great nation will be tarnished. Even if you say the people are good, the nation is great, just a little information of crime will bring you down. That's another impact of cyber crime. Other effects are consumption of computer and network resources, cost on human time and attention of dismissing and unwanted messages such as cyber security is everyone's responsibility cyber security is everyone's responsibility some of us will say what is she talking about how is it my responsibility how does cyber security affect me am i the one to go and start writing one code to prevent cyber attack as we go ahead, you know how is you are responsible for cyber security. Now, what is cyber security? Cyber security is referred to the security through online services to protect your online information. 
as the number of internet users increase, cyber attack increases. And if your security does not increase, you will be a victim. Now, cyber security is necessary since it helps in securing data and threats such as data theft, misuse, and also safeguard our systems from viruses. Advantages of cyber security. It defends us from critical attacks. It helps us, those that enjoy browsing, will browse safely, and it secures us generally internet security. Major security problems. We've talked about cyber attack, but we're just bringing out some so that we'll be aware of them. The common ones that we face every day. We have viruses, hackers, malware, Trojan horse, and password cracking. What is a virus? A virus is a program loaded on your computer system without your knowledge and it runs against your wish. Now, how do you prevent virus? Do we know what this is? Hmm? antivirus. These are just some security software that we can use to prevent viruses. Hacking. Since we know that hacking is illegal intrusion, there is basically, or we should say it is actually impossible to totally prevent hacking. But there are some measures we can take by using a very good password, password security, and making use of firewalls. Malware. The word malware is termed malicious software. It's actually a software that infects and damages the computer system without the owner's knowledge or permission. And how do we stop malware? We can stop malware by downloading an anti-malware program that helps to prevent the infection. We can stop malware by activating network threat protection and by the use of firewall and antiviruses. Trojan horse. Trojan horse is an email virus that duplicates itself and steals your information and it also harms your computer system. These viruses are serious threats to us. If you've experienced any threat like this, you will understand what I'm talking about. They are serious threats to us. Okay, so how do we prevent Trojan horse. We can pre prevent Trojan horse by using security suits such as Kapaski, Avats, and others. The, what this security suit does is to prevent the Trojan horse when you are about downloading them. So at that moment, it's up to you. If an alert comes up, this, this um, attachment you want to download has Trojan horse, and you decide to download it, who is to blame? You are to blame. So we can actually prevent Trojan horse by 
making use of these security suits. Now, our responsibilities in cyber security. We have security for our desktop and laptop systems. How do you secure your desktop and laptop systems? By using virus detection software that is regularly updated. If you have a virus detection software, let's say for instance, you, they, they install an antivirus for you and the day they did the installation, an update was done. You are giving the system and you say, I have an antivirus. When the antivirus picks an update, you say, this thing is wasting my data. You stop it. You stop the updates. First time, second time, continuously you are stopping the updates. Continuously you stop the updates. When an attack comes, are you secured? You are not secured. Because that update is like they've seen this attack. The solution is out. They are always working ahead. So if you don't update your security system, you are backward. When the latest attack comes, it won't be able to fight it. Password protected screen savers. Your systems should be password protected. Secure physical setup that is not open to the public. How? Those of us that our systems are on the network. File and, file and system sharing. If you leave it open, not passworded, anybody that is on the network will be able to access your files. But if it's passworded, even if they try to access it, that pop-up will come up for them to enter the details before they will have access to your files. Require network logins if you are on the network. I just said that. Standardize the desktop so as to limit what an end user can and cannot do. That's why for our Windows system, we have guest users. You can leave the guest user open with limited access. Your files are secured. But when your system is just there, anybody comes in, this one comes. Anything can happen at any time. You can't really say who is who. We need to be security conscious. We have server security. How do you secure your server? The server should be kept in a locked and restricted area. Administrative password and equivalency should be given to a minimum number of people. Server shouldn't be something that anybody would have access to. In short, when you are in a place, no one is meant to know if you have a server or not. Just those in-house are meant to know. And even if they know, not everyone is meant to have the administrative password. Because anything can be done at any time. There should be restriction. Administrative passwords should be changed regularly. If you are able to guess my password today, you shouldn't be able to guess it tomorrow. The password should be changed regularly. Users should only be given access to files system that will act, that will actually that they actually need to use. Anything that is not relevant to them should be kept aside. If I say I need to access um, files of all the cars 
in this company, for instance. I don't have anything to do with files of all the planes in this company. Only the files I need should be accessible by me. Users of virus detection, use virus detection software that is regularly updated. Network security. When you are in, on a network, you are open. How? Once your system is on a network, network is for sharing of resources. So if you are not secured, anybody can have access to it. So how can you be secured on a network? To be secured on a network, you make use of a firewall. For a layman, I will say a firewall is a wall with a fire. When you bring something and put it on fire, what happens? It consumes, destroys it totally. So that's the layman's explanation I'll give to you on what a firewall is. It causes a barrier. It doesn't allow any unauthorized access. So a firewall are systems or combination of systems that supports an access control policy between two networks. Firewall can limit the types of transaction that enters a system as well as the type of transaction that leaves. So it handles access. Secondly, use powerful encryption techniques. Talking about encryption techniques, let's say, for instance, you need to send some um, files on a network. How many of us have heard of WinRA? WinRA. Just a few. Okay. WinRA, I want to explain it in the way. What WinRA does is, if you have this file, you have this file. You, it's for security and it's for compression of files also. So if you have this file, you have this file, you have this file. You want to secure it and compress it, make everything one to, for easy distribution. It takes all the files, gather them together, and put, combine them, keep it, give it a name. Let's say RA. Some of them might be zip, depending on the application you are using. Now, when you do this, there's an option of securing. You can put a password. When you are putting that password, you don't just put a password that anybody can guess. One, two, three, four, five, six. In a secured file, and you tell me put the password. What is the first thing that comes to your mind? Zero, 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 zero. One, two, three, four. Common things, you don't use them. You think of something that even if your best friend is asked what is the password, the person won't be able to guess. The password is between you and you alone. Make use of secured encryption techniques. Now, personal measures. I told us that cyber security is everyone's word responsibility. So what are the measures that we should take as individual? Number one, uninstall unwanted software. Any software you didn't put in, you stumble on it, the first thing you should do is what? Uninstall. Check security settings. Use powerful antivirus software and update it regularly. Back up your computer data on a disk or CD often. There are some people when they come here, let's say for instance, their system crashed. They'll start crying. The file my ogre gave to me, I have a presentation by 12 o'clock today. Please help me get the file. Why are they crying? No backup. 
are giving the files on their systems were backed up. Even if the system crashed, what will they go? What will they do? They'll just go to the backup, lift it up, and they go ahead. They can solve that problem later. Keep your operating system up to date with critical security updates. Always update your operating systems. Those that made the software, they know the faults the software has, and they always bring up new solutions to solve those problems. So always update your operating system. Now, what are some precautions we should take while using the internet? Log out and log in on your account each day. Some of us, if you pick our computer system, you don't, Facebook, you don't need to log in. Once anybody goes, types Facebook on the browser, it comes up. Log out and log in on your account each day. Then disable unused accounts. Change the password of your account at least every 30 days. I know someone that knows how to do that thing very well. I'm giving a password today. And in the next few days, I'll be like... I thought I knew this password. I'll be lost. By the time I run back, did you change the password? I say, yes, I did. I'll say, oh, security. He's actually doing the right thing. Change the password of your account at least every 30 days. Then never give your full name or address to strangers on the internet. What's your name? John Bosco Peters. They won't even ask you age. I'm 19 years old. My father's name is Paul James Peters. You give your details. Phone numbers, every, everything. Don't do that. Don't open emails or attachments from unknown sources. Now, you will see urgent message. If it's not urgent message, you, you just see $100. Once you cite $100, you open. We're laughing, but we do it. Don't open emails or attachments from unknown sources. Never send your credit card number to any site that is not secure. That's an error. Never send your credit card details to any site that is not secure. But even if the site is secure, there are some sites they will give you the option of saving your details. How many of us have used that kind of sites? They will give you the option of saving your details. They say so that when you want to do the transaction, very easy, quick access. But don't do that. It's safer to always type in the detail than to save it and they will use it for whatever they want to do. Child protection from cyber attack. Personal information should never be given out without parental permission. This means not sharing your last name, home address, any personal information, no matter how they put it. These people are very funny. They will ask you what's your name. You can give them another name. Fine. The next thing they will ask you is what's your father's name? What's your brother's name? What they will just be asking you. Some, at times I wonder and by the time you give them those informations, they are smart. The ones you didn't give to them, they will get them. So do not give out any personal information without parental permission. Then passwords are meant to be kept 
private. You can't say because the person is your best friend. Password, password, you give out everything. Then the day one thing happens, you say, had I known. Passwords are meant to be kept private. Assume that anything that gets posted on social media sites will remain on the internet forever. Some of us, when we post some things, we feel it's my time, let me do it. But five years, ten years to come, those things could be used against us. It remains there. So be very careful when you are posting things on social media. Then cyberbullying is one of the biggest risks out there for kids. They are oppressed. They say if you don't do this, one thing we need, if you don't do this, 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 this. At times, as a result of that, they are manipulated to do what they do not want to do. So we need to be very careful when using the internet. In conclusion, the only system that is truly secure is the system that is turned off and unplugged. So the only way to be safe, the only way to be safe is to pay attention and what? At smart. Thank you. That was very, very intensive. Did you learn something? You learned something, right? So, so please, let's be very careful. Then another thing I will add is, you see this short code that you can easily use to recharge your account. It's, it's, very, it's not safe. It's very dangerous. My money was collected with that. <laughs> Yes, you can just easily dial star three two star star amount hash and they will recharge you. Please, if you have that kind of easy access to recharge, go and put pin and lock it. Because once they collect your phone, they have access to everything. They can just dial a code and collect money, recharge, and everything you have labored and worked for. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mrs. Abwede. I want to ask on behalf of the students. We all use computers. Some of us have computers. And what if one of my classmates come and ask me that he wants to use my computer or my phone? What are the dangers of such? Because I think there are a lot of danger. You will use emotion to say, is it not my friend? Is it not innocently? I can give my phone to somebody, say, don't worry, just make call. As they are calling, they are very smart. They have taken some things. Please, can you enlighten us? Okay. This kind of thing that mom is asking happened in Bessie, that's how university this year. When a friend used the guy's, uh, another, a friend's phone, he, they went to collect ransom because he's, this boy was involved in kidnapping, so he wanted to collect money from from the kidnappers, and they used this guy's phone to transfer money from one person to the other. And when police came, they arrested the person that owned the phone, and he was locked up, almost killed, but somehow. He took God's intervention after, after a lot of investigation. This boy was tortured for a deposition for almost three months before the truth actually came out. So it's something that you should not practice at all. The expert. Okay. Have we heard of a chip that is put on phones to get details and every transaction and everything that happens on that phone. Has anybody heard about it? (laughs) 
We've heard about it. Okay. The next question. How well can you trust a friend? Is it 100%? Some of us might say 99%. Even with that 1%, they can do and undo. So we need to be very careful. Just like Daddy said, I heard of a story. The boys' friends were um, Yahoo boys. He didn't know. Unfortunately for him, one of them came from Lagos to Benin. The guy was wanted. He didn't know. So the friend squatted in his apartment, requested for his system. Friend now, he gave the friend his system. The friend did his normal business and the rest. The next thing, the friend said, ah, someone wants to send money to me. Please give me your account details. Is it nice, friend? He gave the account details. And another person alerted them that that person that was wanted was in that house. You know, bad people are smart. Before they came, the guy had asconded. Who did they pick? The friend. The innocent one. Now the innocent one was saying, I'm not among you. I'm not among. Number one, show me your friend. I will what? Tell you who you are. His friends were Yahoo boys. Can you be a saint in the midst of? It's very difficult. So that one was already a fault. Number two, account detail. It was his own. Number three, computer system was his own. How will he defend himself? So we need to be careful when we give out our personal belongings. Because you can't actually trust a friend. They might look good to you, but the heart of man is desperately wicked. Thank you. Let me just share this um, experience. On the 16th of March, I received this text message. It actually came through the same number of my bank. I bank with First Bank. The same number, if you look at it, this is the sequence of my alerts. So it is still the same first bank. Everything, there's no difference. And it came. Dear customer, your OTP for registration is 398181, generated from mobile channel on 1603-2020-113046. That's time. Use this to complete your registration. Usually, I have been taught that if anybody sends me anything online or text messages or whatever from my bank, I should not act on it until I go to my bank and confront them. So, of course, I ignored it. After some hours, I got a call. And the person said, we are calling you from First Bank, your bank. We have observed that there are some issues with your account and you have multiple bet dates. I just smiled. And I told, I told the guy, I said, point number one, I have never in my life entered different dates of bets. All my accounts, whether bank, whether school, from primary one, everywhere, I have never in my lifetime entered different dates 
of bed. So, sorry, wrong customer. <laughs> Bad market, wrong customer. <laughs> that alone was an indication that it was fraud. And the guy said, when your account will be closed down, you know, you kept threatening and all that. Say, good, good night, sorry. <laughs> and up to today, I've not have been using my account normally and all that. <laughs> so, it's as serious as that, that they, they can even break into your original bank account, your, they, yeah, they clone it, and then they use it to, you know. So, there is one thing that has protected us so far from cyber crimes that I want to share here. Never be greedy. I am not interested. From time to time, I share it on my Facebook platform. I am not interested. This one, this one is happening. You are going to get this, this, this. I am not interested. For girls looking for husbands, I am not interested. I am not interested. You know, sometimes they will come with beautiful girls' pictures and all that. You know, I am not interested. Anything you want to bring, I am not interested. One that you don't have what is, is called now, you don't have an appetite for whatever they will offer. You can go and sleep. <laughs> they will leave you alone. Thank you, my dear. You want to add something? Okay. I just wanted to I just want to add to what he said about first bank. This same this same, I receive this same alert similar to what he said. When the person told me that my account has been blocked, that I said, ah, why? It's a multiple bed date. I say wrong number. <laughs> I just told him wrong number. But when I later I found out that they sent a test message earlier. First bank. Do you know what they wrote? First, then three, then ank. So once you see it, you just if you just think it's first bank. You just wrote first three ank. <laughs> so when I saw the DC, I said these are, these are the people. If you check where you see it, it's they wrote first three, then ank. And I just told the person, wrong number. And the person said, thank you. Say bye bye. <laughs> the, the advice given by the acting GM of DBS Worry is the, is the best advice. Please do not be greedy. Of recent, the CBN has warned that people that have invested their money in what is called cryptocurrency have lost their money in billions in Nigeria. I remember I went with uh, Faith to deliver a lecture in Uni Uniben Alumni Association and somebody was asking me about cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin. When I replied, the guy was very aggressive, so I have to apologize. <laughs> because many people, you cannot convince them that it's not a good investment. See, things like Bitcoin and all this, every investment that brings very high returns should be very suspicious. Avoid it. If savings, banks are giving savings of 2%, 2 1% 2 per annum as interest, and those are the ones that know how to invest money, and they are giving very small interest, you know that it's not easy to generate, to generate so much money and your return on your investment. So any investment that looks too attractive Looks too good. Try as much as possible to avoid it. Thank you, sir. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you have learned a lot today. You want to say some question? Please, I want to ask, what is um, cyber bullying and also cyber terrorism? I want you to talk more on that. Cyber bullying and cyber terrorism. 
she has explained, she's not here, but she has explained cyberbullying. Cyberbullying is actually against kids where children use either the social media or internet and there are some people either their own call, uh, age mates or even uh, more senior people threatening them to give us some information or they will either die or they will arrest them or they will do so many things or kidnap them. So they use so many so, so kind of threat language to extract information from them. The, the target is not really the children, it's their parents to get information about their parents, about the access to their resources and so on and so forth. So it is several players who do it. You know, intimidating children to part with information on, on, on the internet or social media. But she talked about cyber terrorism. Cyber terrorism is using the internet, you know, to attack systems of government, of companies, and sending viruses and other things to ensure the target is not actually to make money, but to disrupt their systems. It is used in a, even in warfare. Like when America killed a Sul a Sul a Suleimani or whatever that, uh, uh, Suleimani, one of the things they prepared for was the cyber attack of Iran. Iran is very good when it comes to that kind of thing because most of the people, that is one of the things that the warfare, they can, because they cannot match America in terms of military warfare. So they use that one as a means of attacking systems. They are not attacking individual computers, they are only servers. Other servers or banks or even their military installations, wherever they are. So is that what the server is? Cyber is, is attacking cyber. something on the internet through the internet. Either you attack um, is, it, is it cyber or cyber terror? Cyber. 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 Thank you, sir. Yeah, uh, my question is, how do you know the site that is, that is secure? How do you, my question is, how do you know the site that is secure in terms of giving information out? Because we actually know that some But how do, how do we know the genuine one and the, the fake one? First of all, it's due diligence. Due diligence in the sense that you, you must carry out a lot of investigations before you part with information. Uh, two, any site that you want to visit. It either has a padlock. When she was here, you see like a padlock shown on the side on the left hand uh, bar of the internet browser, or it has HTTPS site. Those ones are considered to be safe. But at the same time, too, if you go to a site like Jam, Jam is they don't have all those things. be tell that the site is not secure, or simply because you want to have a business to do with Jam, or you want to register as a student, or you want to change some things, you cannot say because it doesn't have a padlock there. You will not uh, put your information. So it is that's why I'm saying due diligence is very important. At this point, we want to allow the general manager, if, if you have something bad to say, or he wants to leave now. So let's, let's thank him for coming. Thank you.